Anatomy 32, Chapter 24, The Digestive System. Topics, pancreas, liver, and gallbladder. So, uh, the pancreas is one of the accessory organs found in the abdominal cavity. It is posterior to the stomach and stretches between the spleen and the duodenum, with its head abutting the duodenum and its tail abutting the spleen. Within the pancreas are two main ducts. There's the large pancreatic duct that runs its length and then fuses with the common bile duct coming from the liver and gallbladder. This then forms the hepatopancreatic ampulla that then leads to the hepatopancreatic sphincter. And so the pancreatic juice that's produced can then exit through the hepatopancreatic sphincter into the duodenum of the small intestine. And then there's also a smaller accessory duct that also can secrete pancreatic juice into the duodenum. Uh, within the pancreatic juices, there are uh, various chemicals and compounds that uh, help the, that are the functions of the pancreas. Uh, the pancreatic juice itself possesses a lot of bicarbonate, making it alkaline or basic. And this allows it to neutralize the acidic gastric juice in the chyme. So the pancreatic juice is able to neutralize the acidity of the chyme coming from the stomach. And of course, in that process, it inactivates pepsin and the uh, lingual lipase. Then the pancreas also is secreting its own digestive enzymes. These include the pancreatic amylase to break down carbohydrates, proteases to break down proteins, pancreatic lipase to break down fats, and ribonuclease and deoxyribonuclease to break down the nucleic acids. So it turns out that most of the chemical digestion of food occurs in the small intestine, and a lot of that chemical digestion occurs by these enzymes produced by the pancreas. Uh, pancreatic disorders, pancreatitis, which is an inflammation of the pancreas and very painful, and then also pancreatic cancer. Unfortunately, pancreatic cancer is difficult to detect. Often a person doesn't know they have it until after it has become extremely severe and started to metastasize, and therefore it is difficult to treat and pancreatic cancer is usually fatal. All right, another accessory organ is the liver and the gallbladder. The liver takes up the majority of the upper right quadrant of the abdominal cavity. It's directly inferior to the diaphragm. And then the gallbladder lies on the inferior surface of the liver. And the liver is this color and the gallbladder is indeed green. The liver has four lobes. The largest lobe is the right lobe. Second largest is the left lobe. The caudate lobe is near the inferior vena cava, and the quadrate lobe is near the gallbladder. The liver also is able to attach to the anterior abdominal wall via the falciform ligament, which is part of the peritoneum. The uh, common hepatic duct comes out of the liver carrying bile and it will fuse with the cystic duct of the gallbladder to form the common bile duct. So common hepatic duct fuses with cystic duct to form common bile duct, and then leads to the heptopancreatic sphincter to release the bile into the duodenum of the small intestine. Uh, there are also three kinds of blood vessels coming to and from the liver. There is the hepatic artery. Hepatic artery arrives with oxygenated blood to the liver. There's the hepatic portal vein. The hepatic portal vein is carrying nutrients uh, from the small intestine, so nutrients absorbed by the small intestine, and bring them to the liver. And it's called a portal vein because it is connecting two sets of capillary beds, capillary beds in the small intestine where the nutrients uh, get absorbed into the bloodstream and the capillary bed within the liver that can allow nutrients to leave. And then there's also the hepatic veins, and hepatic veins carry blood out of the liver 
and directly send it into the inferior vena cava. Gallbladder. Gallbladder has one function, and that is to store bile. It's basically just a muscular sac that stores bile. And the gallbladder connects to the common hip, uh, bile duct via the cystic duct. So the gallbladder cystic duct fuses with the common hepatic duct to form the common bile duct. And here's just a view of that occurring. And then at the very end of the common bile duct, it connects and fuses with the pancreat pancreatic duct, forming the heptopancreatic ampulla which then leads to the heptopancreatic sphincter that controls the release of the uh, bile and uh, pancreatic juice into the duodenum. So again, we have the uh, right and left hepatic ducts carrying bile to the fused from the common hepatic duct, which leaves the liver and fuses with the cystic duct to form the common bile duct, which then, then travels down to the um, Heptopancreatic um, ampulla, which then allows the fluids to enter the duodenum. Gallbladder disorders include uh, the gallbladder forming gallstones. Gallstones are hard structures made of crystallized cholesterol, and these stones can partially or completely block the flow of bile, either blocking it in the cystic duct or in the common bile duct. Um, this is painful and can cause various problems. And if someone is getting gallstones as regularly, they could have a cholecystectomy, which is the removal of the gallbladder. All right, the liver again, the histology of the liver. Well, the liver is possessing many, many cells called the heptocytes, hepatocytes, sorry. The hepatocytes are the liver cells. They line up in rows. Uh, the hepatocytes uh, connect to these tiny bile canaliculi, so one canaliculus, many canaliculi. These are the structures that collect bile being produced by the hepatocytes. There are also hepatic sinusoids. These are highly permeable blood capillaries that are receiving blood from both the hepatic artery and the hepatic portal vein. They're adjacent to hepatocytes, allowing hepatocytes to pull out nutrients from the bloodstream to try to neutralize toxins and so on. Uh, taking a slightly further back view, we see that there is the portal triad, which is a reoccurring structure within the liver. And the portal triad is composed of a bile duct, a branch of the hepatic artery, and a branch of the hepatic portal vein. So you see that occurring repeatedly throughout the liver. So with blood flow, we have oxygenated blood coming from the hepatic artery and nutrient-rich deoxygenated blood from the hepatic portal vein. They both empty into the liver sinusoids, those blood capillaries. Um, and then the capillaries will eventually fuse and empty into the central vein of the liver, which then uh, leads to the hepatic vein, which then empties into the inferior vena cava, and so on. The liver has a lot of functions. It is a very important organ for the uh, digestive system and for the overall functions of the body. So, of course, one thing it does is synthesizes and secretes bile. Bile is important because it can emulsify lipids and fats. So what this basically means is that the lipids and fats are hydrophobic, so they form these big fatty globules, and the bile is able to break those big globules into smaller globules that are then easier uh, for the lipases, the digestive enzymes, to um, access and break down those lipids. So it acts kind of like soap. It breaks big blobs of fattiness into teeny tiny blobs of fattiness that are then easier for the lipases to access and uh, break down the lipids. Uh, it's involved in carbohydrate metabolism. So 
So the liver, it helps to maintain the normal blood glucose levels. It can store glucose in the form of glycogen, or it can release glucose by breaking down the glycogen. Lipid metabolism, um, the liver can store triglycerides, uh, or it can break them down into fatty acids, um, and it also is able to control cholesterol levels. So the liver controls cholesterol levels, sending excess cholesterol into the bile. Protein metabolism, uh, the, lip, uh, the liver is able to take amino acids, which is the building block of proteins, and the aminate them and turn them into different kinds of amino acids. So turning one type of amino acid into a different type of amino acid, or it can even turn amino acids into glucose. So another way to get glucose for the body. And during protein metabolism, the liver produces, the, produces urea, which is a waste that gets sent into the bloodstream. Liver is also able to process and neutralize drugs and able to process and be activated by hormones. Uh, the liver uh, is able to excrete bilirubin into the bile. Bilirubin is um, part of the hemoglobin found in erythrocytes, found in red blood cells. Uh, the liver also can store glycogen, which is, means it's strong glucose. It can store triglycerides. It can store some vitamins and minerals. Uh, within the liver, our phagocytes are specialized macrophages that are found in the liver sinusoids that can engage in phagocytosis, can try engulf any pathogens that also were absorbed through the lining of the small intestine. And then the liver uh, completes the activation of vitamin D and sends that hormone to the kidneys. So the liver has lots of functions. You know what not listed on here is also the function of removing old erythrocytes, old red blood cells from the bloodstream. All right, disorders of the liver. Well, there's hepatitis. Hepatitis is any kind of inflammation of the liver. It could be caused by viruses, potentially other pathogens, by drugs and other chemicals. However, usually when people talk about hepatitis, they're talking about viral hepatitis. And there turns out there's five different kinds of hepatitis viruses that can affect, infect, and um, damage the liver. And that is it for this part of chapter 24.